Welcome back. So I've just created another test here that we're going to try and figure out. And this one is just, we should call delete product with the product that we want to delete when we click the delete button. So it pretty much means if we go back here, if we click the list component right here, if we have a single item, that's where we're going to start. And I click this button for that single item, I'm passing in and calling delete product with the actual product I want to delete, right? So we need to kind of figure out, get the button, do the click event, and then hopefully it should have called this method once and it should actually pass in the product that I want to delete, right? So that's kind of the test that we're going to try out in this uh, lesson right here. So let's try and jump back to our code. So again, the first thing we need to do is kind of create a single product. So we can do that just by copying this and we're just going to get a single product right here. There we go. So now we have a single product available. And the next thing we want to do is we want to figure out if we can actually click the delete button. So let's go and get that delete button. And again, in the helper right here, I've made a small click button and then we can just pass in the delete text. And now it's actually clicked. If you haven't seen it yet, I can go in here and show you. It's, it's a pretty simple one. I go in and I find all buttons and I pretty much just run over all buttons. And if I find the button I'm looking for with the right text, it just clicks it. So it's, it's very simple method in the helper. You can just go and check it out. So now the button should have been clicked. And now I just need to figure out how I actually know that that button was actually clicked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spy right here before I click the button. I want to spy. And what I want to spy on is actually I want to spy on um, the object, which is the component in this case. And that component has a method. And our method right here I want to spy on is the delete product method. Let's try and spy on that guy. So now we are listening. And when we're clicking right here, that method should now I expect that the component dot delete product was called um, with the product that I just created. So again, I can go and I can say helper dot products, and then I can get the zeroth product. I expect that, that method was actually called with that product. That's actually all I had to do. Now I've tested that when I click this button, the delete button, I should actually go and uh, call this method with this specific product. Let's see if it worked. So again, it passes. And let's just for the fun of it, try and make sure that it's not just uh, kind of funky. So let's just go in here and delete it with a string like this. And hopefully we get an error now. Boom, because it's actually not called with an array, like it's not called with a D, it's actually called with the object that I expected. So it works, it works. That was how simple it actually was now with all the helpers that we have now, with the spy and stuff like that, to start listening for informative stuff like this. It is informative that when I click that button, it should actually only call this guy once. Now we can start using this for what happens if we click like five times, should we kind of, when we click once, should we maybe disable the button? Stuff like that. Because what if I click this twice? What will actually happen? Uh, it will hit this once, but it'll actually hit it multiple times. So we can make another test here. I think I would do that in another test, but let's just do it now. Should be clicked, should to have been clicked, to have been called one time, right? So that's kind of another test right here. And again, I just wanna show you guys this. Um, there we go, it still works. But let's say that by mistake, I spammed that button, click, click, click. It should still only be called once, right? We don't wanna hit the delete button multiple times and now we'll fail because it's actually called three times. How could we fix that? Well, let's just go into our click, uh, our delete product right here. What if we said, as soon as we click this button right here, the delete product, we want that button to be kind of disabled. We're not going to do that right now, but we could set that up in our code and say, as soon as you click that button, you actually are not allowed to click it again. I'm not going to build that right now, but that's kind of the point right here that I want to kind of point out is that right now, if I spam the button, I might hit this event three times. That's just annoying. So let's just get rid of the delete again and only call it once. And let's just make two methods instead of two expects. I'm going to make the first one right here that kind of says, I'm going to hit it only once. Uh, should call delete product once when we click the delete, right? So here we'll just say once. Zoomy. 
So that's the, just a test that we only hit it once right now when I click it once. And the second one is that we want to delete it. So I'll just keep this guy here. And now we have two methods. Now the reason I don't want to expect this, it's just easier for us to kind of uh, read each method now if we fail. So now I just have two methods instead. And that's pretty much all we had to do. We're done. We can now start testing using spice. We can test that we call stuff, we call with the right information, we can do even more, but we'll dive into that if we start doing test-driven development later. So let's just wrap this up right here. Have a great day. See you next time. Have fun.